Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 17th, and today we're going to be taking a look at this week system as it slides through the area today, bringing very light precipitation amounts, not a big weather maker. And our next system is out here. The cold air associated with this middle latitude cyclone is going to ride over the top of this ridge, get a little bit of a reinforcing shot from some Arctic air, then move down over the Pacific Northwest on into Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and then maybe another glancing blow out of the north into mid next week. We'll take a look at that in some detail. So diving into things here, you can see around the rest of the country, there is some standing any wind still going for Southern California. You see the blizzard warnings for areas of North Dakota and Minnesota, their active weather continues. Winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings still for the Midwest for that snowfall. So heads up for that if you have any concerns up through the Great Lakes there. You can see there's a tornado watch in effect, mostly from Mississippi there. And there are a few tornado or the, at least one tornado warning inside of that tornado watch ongoing now. And there still is a potential for a strong tornado in that region down there. So heads up if you have any concerns down through the southwest. Tornadoes are possible. And here's kind of the timing there. You can see it going from west to east on into this afternoon there for Hattiesburg, Mississippi, Philadelphia out there into this afternoon. Slight and enhanced risk there. So there is a potential for tornadoes out there. It's coming that time of the season. We usually get a couple of these systems moving through in February and it's that time of year. So checking out the southeast here, look at the dew points that are rising up in front of that system as in response to that, these southerly winds. And then watch this cold front just kind of chop through this dew point. It's kind of a fascinating looking run. I always like watching the cold fronts move down across out over the Gulf of Mexico there. And you can see that much drier air in the wake of that system there. So anyway, back to the Pacific Northwest here. You're looking at the Northern Hemispheres and North Pole, Alaska, British Columbia, Washington here in the Pacific Ocean and Hawaii. See that big ridge dominating our weather pattern for the last month or more. And this is that weak wave moving through the ridge that's coming down over us now. It doesn't even really register at the surface. It's going to bring some very late precipitation amounts, mainly higher terrain. But as we go into put this into motion here, you can see for Saturday, this next trough starts digging out over the Pacific Northwest here. This is going to bring much colder air aloft. And there's going to be some uh, convective available potential energy with this system. And that's going to be our hope for some winter weather getting down to the surface there. The convective nature of this system will allow us to tap some of that colder air aloft. It's going to be very marginal at the surface for any kind of accumulating snow with this system, but we'll take a look at that a little more here too. So you can see this trough opens up over the west here, and you can see another little shot of that colder air coming down Monday night to Tuesday morning as the ridge kind of maintains itself here. Then maybe another little glancing blow as we go Wednesday night into Thursday, reinforcing that trough as it starts to move across central portions of the country there. And you see that ridge kind of retreats back north here on the European model. And it does allow, at least in the extended here for the control run for some uh, troughing out here over the Gulf of Alaska. So kind of a pattern change potentially, but you know, some of the ensembles are not in agreement with this and the GFS is not in agreement with it too. So this is a ways out. So we need to watch this. We've got big model disagreement here at this range. So jump in a little bit closer here. Again, you see that system move down today and then here comes the one on saturday sunday and monday and you can kind of see this clipping us from the north and the east there as this ridge drives that trough down over the western usa and eventually ejects out over the lower 48 here and then going on into the future another weak system kind of rides up over the top of this flattened ridge here too and the displaced ridge up further north and you can see a bit of this the gfs kind of builds this ridge back here and we do still get some troughing on the West Coast, but it brings us back into the pattern we've been dealing with. But this is way out in the GFS. We have plenty of time to look at this at this point. But you can see the big model disagreement out in the extended GFS versus the European. And now we're looking at temperatures aloft here. It's 10,000 feet. So you can see the very cold air aloft to the interior up over Canada, Hudson Bay there. And as we go into Saturday morning here, you can see this colder air aloft diving down the West Coast here through Southeast Alaska, all the way down into Washington and Oregon, much colder air aloft coming our way. So if we can get any type of convective showers, we can tap this air at 10,000 feet and really drag that snow level down. So there's probably gonna be some reports of snowfall at some point during the system here, mainly Sunday night through Tuesday morning, I imagine here, but you can see the air aloft gets very cold on into next week above us 
as the flow continues out of the north. So this is looking at 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet, relatively warm now. And as we go into the future, you see this approach out of the northwest, and you see the air get much chillier over the region. You can see that kind of sagging down. So this Arctic air does get into British Columbia here a bit, and we get much colder on into Tuesday. And the thing is that precipitation is going to taper off here as we get into Monday and Tuesday. So how much of this cold air will get in in time to create maybe some residual troughing and some residual convergence zone activity across western Washington or maybe even some lines of showers into western Oregon. And as this onshore flow continues aloft, maybe continue the snowfall on into early next week for the Cascades. will be plenty cold enough for them up there. And now taking a look at the surface pressure map, you can see we have a system dive down Thursday and on into Friday and kind of clip across the northern states there. And then you see our system this weekend. You can see the troughing kind of open up and include the Pacific Northwest here as this Arctic air mass kind of builds up into central British Columbia there. And you can see this troughing kind of hold on a bit as the cold air tries to arrive here Monday evening. And so that's just some pretty chilly air getting out over us here. And again, it's going to be mainly a loft will stay pretty marginal at the surface for any kind of snow accumulations, which we'll look at here shortly. And going on to the extent of the European control run, you can see kind of some troughing over the Gulf of Alaska, which be, would be quite the change up from what we've been getting for the past, what, four to six weeks now here for the Pacific Northwest. So maybe the Europeans on to something there. We'll be able to check that out as we go, though. And here we go on into, let's check out this system as it dives out of the northwest here. You can see it bringing the, the heavy mountain snows. With these bands of onshore flow here and the really cold air aloft, there's going to be some really big snowfall amounts in the Oregon and Washington Cascades and even off into the Rockies here of British Columbia, Montana, and Idaho. So you can see this Arctic air mass get entrenched over British Columbia here. Not a true Arctic outbreak down south, but there are going to be some residual convective bands that move through the area here that we're going to look at here in a minute. And so there's going to be some, probably some reports of snow and some lower elevations uh, through western Washington, Oregon, as we go into Tuesday morning. So now taking a little bit closer look at that here, notice that system just come blasting down to the northwest and really start piling up the snow here in the Cascades. Check out this convergence zone late Monday night as we go into Sunday morning. There's going to be some pretty good snowfall amounts in any kind of bands that form like this, especially up in the Cascades. And then you can see this move down into the Oregon Cascades as we go into Sunday evening. And the onshore flow continues. Here we are into Monday morning now, and we're still piling up the snow for the Cascades here. And some of these showers are going to bring either small hail or maybe some snowfall down to the surface here at times, probably into as early as Monday morning. And then as you get to Monday night, you still see some residual um, convective showers going on through here. And we're here we're going to look at Cape for the region here. This is the GFS, and we're looking at Saturday afternoon here. You can see it already building up through British Columbia here. And as we go into Sunday Late morning and afternoon, look at all this convective available potential energy through the region here. And this is going to give us a chance for a couple of lightning strikes as well to add into the fun of this colder air aloft coming and a repeat there on Monday evening too, as that kind of moves off to the southwest on Tuesday. Checking out the European here, this is the instantaneous flash rate. This kind of shows for some, what kind of lightning potential we could be looking at here. As we go into Saturday, Sunday morning now, and then you'll see Sunday late morning, you can see the lightning potential around noon really start to increase across Washington State down towards Portland as well. And that continues on into the early afternoon for these regions. So this is a pretty strong signal for a chance of a couple lightning strikes around the region. And as we go into Monday here, you'll notice the same thing, kind of a repeat on into Monday afternoon here, especially for Western Washington as we st still continue to get some onshore flow and some colder air aloft, and those showers can be tapping that cold air. So now we're looking at the Canadian. Let's check out the Canadian, see if how much it differs from the GFS and the European model here. It's the sharp trough, pretty good model agreement that that is coming for this weekend here. And now we're into Monday morning as this opens up over the West Coast here. So pretty good model agreement this far out. And let's go ahead and update this and give us more recent information here. That only went out to 99 hours there. See that trough eject out over the lower 48. 
and this ridge kind of builds up. But yeah, in the extended of the Canadian, it shows a little bit more troughing out over the Gulf of Alaska. So that is a a little bit of a hope. Maybe break down this persistent ridge as it's been dominating our weather for the last four to six weeks now across the Pacific Northwest. And here's the GFS surface map. There's the system that goes by. And then here comes the main one that's coming down this week. And you see the troughing kind of hanging out <clears throat> as this high pressure really builds into British Columbia. There's some pretty good Arctic air getting in there. Um, the troughing is going to be here. So there's going to be some residual bands of onshore flow. And maybe it can tap this colder air loft and drag that snow level down. So I imagine we probably will get some lowland snow level reports as we go on into Monday on into Monday, actually, and then maybe on even um, into Tuesday morning, potentially depends on how this troughing sets up. So pretty good shot of cold air coming. Winter is not done just yet. And here's the long range European model from last night. And you can see the system moving through today, very weak. And then there's a big trough that opens up over the West Coast and kind of got a little reinforcing shot in it, if you notice there on Monday night. And then that ridge kind of gets displaced to the north as we start to, this is where we're looking at that Gulf of Alaska, low pressure on the Canadian and the extended of the control run of the European. And now if you'll notice this here though, we go into the far into the extended and what does the European ensembles want to do that wants to build this ridge back up over us yet again on into early March. So I don't know, maybe that'll lead to some nice sunny warm days in early March, who knows, but that's a long way out and this is way off in fantasy land, but it's kind of discouraging if you guys want to see a more return to some wetter, warmer systems out of the southwest and get some mountain snows and some precipitation to, you know, stifle our drought threat for the eastern portions of the state. But there you have it for the extended European here. Now let's look at the snowfall potential we can look, see for portions of the states here. Look at some of these snowfall totals building on Saturday night already for the Central Cascades. Any kind of convergent zone activity with this really cold air aloft, powerful onshore flow, and some convective nature to these showers can really build up the snowfall totals through Washington all the way down through the Oregon Cascades. Would be much needed snowfall, especially through eastern Oregon there and out through the Rockies of Montana and Idaho and British Columbia. And then maybe another system well off into the extended. But some really good snowfall potential with this system coming up here, especially for the mountains. And these are some visual maps here. So the temperature is 18,000 feet. So here we go, the weak system. And then the big trough digs out over us for this weekend, you can see here, and then retreats off to the east. And as we look here, this is at 10,000 feet, putting this into motion here. I'll slow it down a little. You can see that sharp trough digging out over us at 10,000 feet. Some really cold air getting out over us there at 10,000 feet. And some of our convective showers might be able to tap into that. And then we'll dive into next. Here's 5,000 feet. It settles over British Columbia pretty good there and gets over Western Washington. Now here's the surface. So you can see that cold air really get down over us. It's not going to, it's not putting us in the ice box like it was in December or anything, but you're going to notice the chillier air down into Western Washington, Western Oregon, eastern portions of the state, British Columbia. And then it's going to warm up after that into mid and later next week. So it won't be long lasting. It's not going to be, you know, below freezing with snow on the ground for days or anything like that. Uh, snow accumulations down low will be fairly light and they will be brief and they'll probably melt immediately after the shower passes over. So here's Seattle Tacoma going on to the extended here too. This is the European... Um, this is last night's run, but you can see all the way through early March, the control is an outlier here. It has over an inch and a half, but that's not much rain at all, really, for the Pacific Northwest and Seattle. And the mean is generally below an inch and a half through um, early March. So, again, we're kind of creating a precipitation deficit here, and this is really going to show itself for the eastern portions of the state going on this spring as far as drought concerns. So that's not really a good signal there. And you can see Spokane, again, the control is kind of an outlier. It's above the mean here. The mean has just barely more than half an inch through early March. So not something you really want to see here. And Vancouver, pretty much the same signal here. The control is an outlier and just, you know, what, an inch and a half maybe here for the mean going through early March. So anyway, we'll take a closer look at this system again tomorrow. Things are, you know, models are in pretty good agreement of the system moving down this weekend now. 
And the fun thing for me is just watching these convective showers move through with the lightning potential and, you know, just kind of seeing how, how these do and watching some, some portions of the areas are going to get small hail. Some portions will get light snowfall as this moves through and depending on how that goes. In fact, I'm going to back up a little bit here and we're going to take a look at, let's just go ahead and zoom in here on the Northwest. And actually I wanted to show you this here too. So we're going to look at the, the winds here at just off the service, 920, uh, about 2,500 feet. So as we go into Saturday, you can see this powerful onshore flow here in convergence zone signature. I wanted to show you that we're going to get some Fraser River outflow here going on. As you see it kick in there on Monday late morning here as it just start this offshore flow starts taking over here. So uh, this is what's going to come blasting down the sound. Some of these convective showers are going to take advantage of some of this north wind moving down the sound. Maybe it'll be further south over Portland or maybe it'll be central Puget Sound. We just don't know yet. But you can see also on Mon on Sunday night into Monday morning, there's some pretty good northwest winds moving down the sound of Vancouver Island convergence zone too, which with that cold air aloft can bring some nice small hail showers through there and some lightning strikes down through the Puget Sound into western Oregon, as we saw there on the lightning map. So just wanted to point that out real quick. We are going to get some Fraser River outflows. You can see it going on pretty good there Monday afternoon. And really powers up there Monday night. And there's some pretty good pressure gradients going across from Lake Williams, the interior of British Columbia to Bellingham here too. Some showing um, 18 millibar differences. So some pretty good out Fraser outflow going on there. It's yet to be seen whether or not this is going to create kind of an upslope play here for some potential snow around the Port Angeles area as these Fraser River outflow winds come across the Puget Sound with some cooler air and run up into the mountains, the Olympic Mountains here, and cause some upslope flow and some accumulating snowfall. That's yet to be seen if that's going to happen or not. But you can see those outflow winds all the way through eastern Washington, two powerful northeast winds going down, and then northerlies all the way down through Oregon here. And all the way down the West Coast as these offshore winds really get going. We might get some nice clear days early next week too. So something to look forward to there. So hopefully you guys are liking these videos. And I'll talk again tomorrow. And we'll see how this is looking and see if anything backs off or maybe trends a little stronger. And we'll look at that tomorrow. So I'll talk to you guys later.